Hello, everybody. Welcome to Love, Truth, and Spirit Ministries. This is Pastor Ron, and I'd like to invite you to an event that we've recently put together called Standing in the Gap Together. What Standing in the Gap Together is, is a fast and prayer on Wednesdays. What we'd like to invite you to do is pray and fast with us. A couple weeks ago, my wife was given a word from the Lord. And we're going to share that word with you, but we're also going to invite you to share that word with others and to let's get on our knees and let's pray and let's fast. It's on Wednesdays. You choose the time on Wednesday that you'd like to pray. You choose the items on Wednesday that you'd like to fast. And we're going to do this every Wednesday. So we'd like to invite you to continue on for as long as you possibly can every Wednesday and join us. Here's the scripture that the wife was given. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. That is prophetic, and it really spoke to my heart, because now more than ever, we're in a position to be able to stand in the gap for those who cannot stand, for, to stand in the gap for those who cannot hear, to stand in the gap for those who stand against us. And all I'm saying is we need to pray for all things. I'd like to get one voice, one heart, bring it all together to the Lord on Wednesdays, and let's see how God is going to transform this country into a godly country once again and kick out the enemy. I want to encourage you to when you're fasting and praying, if you don't know what to fast for, take it to the Lord. Ask Him what you can fast. Is it food? Is it a meal? Is it your favorite drink? Ask God, take it to the Lord, what to pray about. If you have no ideas on what to pray about, I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions that our church is praying about right now. And let's just, uh, let's just walk through these. And we'll see how we can do this as a community, as a the Christian community, how we can put this together. Here's some examples. <clears throat> Our nation to find healing and peace. Healing for the sick. Our president and his family. Protection, wisdom, knowledge. We need to pray this for our president. We need to pray this for our leadership. Our vice president and his family for protection, for wisdom, for knowledge. These are the things that we need to lift to him. Let's pray for the lost to be saved. Let's pray that the truth be known. And all eyes are open to see the truth. And all ears are open to hear the truth. And that God would prepare us to accept his truth. The next thing, our Congress and our Senate, to give them biblical knowledge and understanding and wisdoms from the Bible, because it appears today it's lacking. Just last week, we had half of our political system denouncing God. Did they denounce it by the words they spoke? No, they denounced it by their actions. They took under God out of the Pledge of Allegiance in their convention. And what we need to do is we need to stand strong as a Christian body. And we need to pray and fast against that because there is a open rejection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to ask the Lord to continue to have grace on us, continue to have mercy upon us, and to continue 
to shine the light on this nation. Let's pray for finances. For those who are in need, this virus has impacted everybody. The small business owner, the worker. Let's ask the Lord to abundantly bless us. The way he'll do that is if we put all our petitions together and we lay them at his feet. That's how he'll do it. For God's grace to remain upon our nation, and especially for a revival, we need to pray that revival happens. We need to pray that the revival start in our heart. This is the only place the revival can start. It cannot start in a building. It cannot start in a field. It cannot start in a street. It has to start in our heart. And once the revival is ignited in us, then it will spread. It will spread like a wildfire. And that's my prayer. And that's what we're asking for. That's what we're coming to you to join us, to invite you to join us. That we may see God's mighty hand moving across this nation that we may feel God's mighty love in our hearts. And as that love pours into us, it will pour out of us. And we can stay in the grace of God. That is our prayer. And that's our hope, and that's our objective. Again, Second Chronicles 7.14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and pray and seek my face, and will turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. So let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, bring to my mind those things you want me to remember. Our Father, bring to my heart those things you want to change in me. Our Father, bring to my lips the words you want me to speak for the rest of our days. Because, Lord, you deserve all glory. Lord, you deserve all praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we love you with all our hearts, minds, and soul, and strength. In your holy name, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. And uh, my prayers are out for you as I fast and pray. I pray for this nation. You're included in that. Please join us and have a God-blessed, God-filled day. And thank you very much for your time. Amen and God bless you.